I'd like to call the April 27, 2011 Planning Board meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the prior meeting. Anyone have a motion on that? Make a motion. The minutes of the March 17, 2011 meeting be accepted as written. Do I have a second? All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstain. All right. One abstention and five in favor. Six of us here tonight. We have two items of new business on the agenda. And since we have a somewhat new procedure, I thought I would explain it again before we get started. At the end of last year, we added a public comment period to our planning board proceedings. This is in addition to the public hearing, which is a part of our ordinance requirements in connection with certain applications. What this public comment period means that at any time when the planning board has an item on the agenda, we will provide an opportunity to the public to speak. This is intended to encourage more, not less, public participation. So in any case, when we would otherwise have had a public hearing, we will still have a public hearing. So for anyone who's not here tonight who doesn't want to miss having an opportunity to give us input on items on our agenda tonight. Um, to the extent required by statute, we will certainly have a public hearing, and um, if it's a discretionary item, then we will make that decision based on questions that the planning board may have or input that we have received from the public. And of course, the public is always welcome and encouraged to give us input in writing directed to Maureen O'Meara, who will then share it with the rest of us. In terms of procedure, we run the public comment period in the same way that we operate with a public hearing, which means that we will first ask the applicant to make their presentation, uh, provide a brief opportunity to the planning board to ask any basic explanatory questions, then open the public comment period. Each person who would like to speak has up to three minutes to make a presentation with the possibility of follow-up questions from the planning board. We will then close the public comment period, and the planning board will proceed with its deliberations. Just wanted to make that clear, because it is somewhat a new procedure to all of us. So the first item on the agenda tonight is the Golden Ridge Subdivision Amendment. Golden Ridge LLC is requesting amendments to the previously approved Golden Ridge Subdivision to create another lot located at the end of Golden Ridge Lane. Um, this is pursuant to Section 16-2-5 Subdivision Amendment. Is there someone here to make a presentation for the applicant? Please come forward and introduce yourself. Good evening. My name is uh, Betsy Poulin, and I'm from Mitchell and Associates in Portland. And I'm here representing uh, Golden Ridge Lane LLC for this presentation. Uh, it, this is uh, uh, this is a subdivision which was previously approved by the Planning Board in 2003. Uh, we have a location and zoning map up here on the on the screen, and right here is the, I've highlighted, outlined the uh, entire subdivision parcel here in red. Uh, and this is a 15.14 acre parcel, and then the actual area where the um, revisions are is a 10.14 uh, acre parcel, which is mostly in the side of, of the subdivision. Uh, the existing zoning is the residence A, primarily, 
And then there's uh, a few areas where there are wetlands on the parcels. So there's the, the RP2 zone, which is the wetland protection district and the RP1 critical wetland district. And neither of those areas would be um, impacted by this development. Uh, there's also, as you can see, a great pond is in the vicinity, and there's a great pond watershed overlay um, part of the subdivision, too. Here's a, a 2009 aerial photo of the parcel. Um, you can see great pond a little bit better up in the upper left corner. And um, Route 77 is the, uh, where Golden Ridge Lane um, comes into the subdivision. So this is a copy of the 2003 subdivision plan, which was approved. It uh, was by, developed by K&K &K Realty. And uh, the parcel was subdivided into three lots. So uh, th there's one lot, um, this, this lot here, uh, which was um, purchased by Amy Powell, who's an abutter. And then there's this lot, um, <laughs> try to use the word. There's another lot um, at the end of Golden Ridge Lane, um, which was purchased by uh, Stephen Leslie Young. And then the remainder of the parcel was purchased by K&K &K Realty, which is the big lot on the right-hand side. Uh, there's a Golden Ridge Lane is a private, uh, private lane and you can see there's a hammerhead kind of turnaround, I guess, at the end right there. Um, the subdivision, as it was approved, um, included upgrades to Golden Ridge Lane, but there were no building permits that were pulled for, for the, as part of the subdivision process because there were, there were no buildings built. So the improvements that were originally approved um, were not put in place. The only things that uh, happened is post-approval where the selling of the lots and reworking of some of the easements. Um, the Greenbelt pathway used to go a lot across some of the lots and now it was shifted into the Golden Ridge Lane uh, right of way. Uh, and um, another uh, item to note uh, from this previous plan approval uh, is down here in this portion of the site, there was an easement area that was proposed as an open space uh, dedication for the town. And um, on further review, it was decided that um, the town decided that it wasn't um, something they wanted to accept as an easement because it was mostly wetland and it didn't connect to any other uh, open space. So um, th this was taken into consideration with our proposal um, for the subdivision plan. There's no uh, open space areas that are dedicated on this plan, but a financial donation would be made to the town's open space fund instead. So, as I mentioned before, this, this is, it's basically, um, all, we're, all we were doing is proposing to add another lot and extend Golden Ridge Lane. So you can see that this, this is one lot here, and then there's another lot here. And then the Golden Ridge Lane, which termi formerly terminates here, would be extended out this direction. Uh, we've been working uh, very closely with the abutters of, um, that, of Golden Ridge Lane you know, to um, come up with a design that's favorable for everybody and to um, come up with you know, see if there are any issues that need to be resolved that are part of our construction process, and I guess just you know to to make sure everybody's happy with with the how this project will progress. Uh, the the existing road uh, for Golden Ridge Lane is about 11 to 15 feet wide. It's a gravel road, and uh, what we're proposing is to do the same thing as the 2003 plan, which is an 18 foot wide gravel gravel road with the two foot wide grass shoulders on either side. Um, the entering from Route 77, uh, there's along the western side of the, um, the Golden Ridge Lane right of way there, there's a Greenbelt easement 
along that portion of the property. So the road is in, in this area is not exactly centered in the right of way because we didn't want to encroach into that easement for the pedestrian access. So instead of being, you know, it's it's two feet off from the center of the of the um, right of way line, which is pretty minor considering, you know, that to not impact that easement area for the green belt. Uh, the, the roadway improvements are similar to what was proposed in 2003, which is improving the stormwater flow and increasing culvert size. Um, and as I mentioned before, the hammerhead turnaround would be extended down to the end of the, the new extension of Jordan Ridge Lane. Uh, so up here would be a hammerhead turnaround. Uh, at the sketch plan presentation in February, um, John Mitchell presented this, and we were, um, based on information that we already had for this um, parcel, um, we were under the impression that the, we were going to need a construction easement from the Young's property right here, which um, when we were working with our stormwater engineer, we went out and did some site visits, we realized that the watershed divide line that we had on our plan wasn't accurate. So we redelineated that line and submitted it to Bruce Smith for a review and he approved it. So basically that what that means is we don't need the construction easement for the youngs and then that we can have this whole portion of the extension um, centered in the, in the right of way. And so um, we're going to minimize, uh, you know, obviously clearing in, in this area um, and keep everything, you know, any clearing in the right of way. And we're proposing some additional uh, plant material on the Young's property. Um, there'll be some evergreen trees, you know, in a couple locations here, um, which is something that they requested as part of these improvements. Uh, the road improvements will well increase the impervious surface of the site, um, and but the improve the increase is 11,400 square feet, and that falls below the uh, 20,000 square foot threshold of the um, DEP. So no DEP permit will be required. And also, um, none of the resource protection zones will be impacted by the site improvements and the post-development calculations. Um, note that there will be no impacts um, due to the increased impervious surface of the site. Uh, for utilities, the there, is, there were some upgrades uh, in Route 77 in 2007 for um, the water service. So there's a 12-inch main um, on, luckily, our side of the road. <laughs> um, so the proposal is to extend an 8-inch service uh, down, down the road here. Oops, I keep hitting the microphone. <laughs> uh, up to this point here, where there'd be a fire hydrant proposed. And and then from that point on, down the remainder of the lane is uh, going to be a four-inch main extension. And we've met with the Portland Water District uh, to review these um, improvements, and they have um, approved uh, what we're proposing. Uh, and also, um, they would take over the ownership or maintenance of the water line and hydrant after everything is constructed and they're going to throw an easement on the property for the water service. Um, and for the septic, on the, there's no uh, sewer service out in this area, so there have been uh, test pits dug on, on the lots and um, by Albert Frick Associates, and the HHE 200 forms were submitted as part of our application, and, the, and they've been reviewed and approved. Um, for adequate um, service on the site. The current uh, Golden Ridge Lane has overhead electric uh, cable and telephone that goes down the length, um, the, the full length of the property, and there's a pole right here on the Young's lot. So it's all overhead service to this point. And we're proposing to not change any of that because it's connected to existing residences that are out there. But from that point, we would run underground service to the new lots um, within the road right of way. Um, so we will be uh, working with CMP, or we are working with CMP, to obtain an easement on the Young's property to 
extend this underground service um, over to the new proposed lots. Uh, for storm drainage, it's, it's uh, just the sheet flow um, that's proposed from the roadway and, and culverts. You know, there's no um, catch basins or anything like that. Um, the existing site has um, a few easements. Um, one of them, the Greenbelt easement, which I mentioned before, um, utility easements, the CMP has, um, you know, the poles and the overhead service on the property. And also um, some relating to the access uh, in um, passing over the existing Golden Ridge Lane. Um, Golden Ridge Lane LLC is proposing to update the uh, roadway maintenance agreement, uh, which was first written in 1986. And this is to address the ownership and access and shared you know, maintenance responsibilities for all of the, the owners who, who use that portion of the road. And this, this maintenance agreement, there's a draft that we submitted, but it's also something that's a, an agreement that we're working on you know, with all the abettors. And um, you know, well, the, the goal is to have a nice new clean document at the end of this process. And there's, um, I mentioned also the Portland Water District easement, you know, which will be for the water service. And there's also a proposed, a 20 foot wide um, pedestrian easement up here on this lot, lot three, which would basically be for the owners of lot four to be able to cross over and attach to the green belt pathway. We are requesting a few waivers. Um, one is for the road width. Um, the town standard is a 22 foot road with four foot shoulders and we're re requesting to reduce that to an 18 foot road with two foot shoulders. And this is the same as what was proposed and approved in 2003. And uh, it's been reviewed uh, by the fire chief too and he, he's accepted uh, the way that our plan is designed. Another one is uh, waiver is for the road alignment. As I mentioned, the first 550 or so feet of Golden Ridge Lane, we're, we're going to shift it slightly just two feet off from the center line to avoid that Greenbelt easement. Another waiver was for the scale of the plan. Um, we've submitted a subdivision plan drawn a scale of one inch equals 60 feet so that you can show the whole parcel on one plan. Um, and the standard in the ordinance is one inch equals 40 foot scale. Uh, the next waiver was for um, the datum. Because the topography, we were using topography from the original subdivision plan. And these plans have reference to mean sea level, not to the USGS datum. And so we were requesting a waiver to use the, the datum that's on the current survey. Um, we did receive the comments um, in the AMEC letter dated uh, April 14th and um, have reviewed the responses and resubmitted um, to uh, Maureen on the 22nd. Um, I know that none of you have seen any of these um, revisions, but I could definitely go through and, and touch on you know, our responses to, to his comments, if you would like. That's that presentation. Okay, does anyone have any questions I'd like to ask? or? Just a quick question about the planting um, the, of the evergreens with the youngs. This was at their request. So yeah. I was wondering, um, sometimes we'll see on the plans where those trees, how many trees, that level of detail. Um, mm -hmm. When you work with the youngs over the next month, do you think you would actually get something that concrete, the number, the placement? Uh, there, there is a plan uh, on the, the road plan. I think it's sheet four that there, there are some plants shown on there. Um, there's like six evergreen trees. Okay, so, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. We'll open the public comment period and may have some questions for you in a bit. Okay. Any member of the public want to comment? The, the first issue, be clear here, the first issue before the planning board is the question of completeness, whether there is enough information for the planning board to proceed, not the merits of the proposal. 
If you were to make a determination about completeness tonight and then go ahead to make determination about um, approval, mm -hmm. then you would want to have two comment periods. But if you're going to have, say, a completeness determination and then a tabling, then you would only need one comment period. Okay. Well, our normal procedure would then only result in one comment period. So if there are any members of the public who wish to comment tonight, please come forward and comment on whatever aspect of this you would like to comment on at this point. But our, our decision, our initial decision to make is that of completeness. Anyone here to speak on this application? No one? Okay, then the public comment period is closed and members of the planning board, if you have questions or things you want to discuss, perhaps we should start by having you come back and review the responses to the uh, engineer's letter. Imagine everyone's interested to hear that. This is your, the letter of April 14, 2011. I guess, would you like me to read his actual comment and then a response? I, I could just go no, number think, one, No, I think we two. all have it, and it's been in the public record for quite a while, so I don't think we need to read okay. it. If you can just address the responses, that would be fine. Okay, so for, for number one, there's obviously no response required. That's just a project understanding. I'm and sorry, you're going to have to speak a little louder. The microphone is not picking you up very well. Okay. Actually, if you move your computer over a bit, so it doesn't block the microphone on the podium, you might get a little bit. Okay, for um, number one the pro is project understanding. Um, so obviously the, there's no response required. Uh, number two, about the professional land surveyor's stamp. Uh, in our cover letter, um, we requested um, that the existing conditions plan and the amended subdivision plan be stamped at um, the time of the final subdivision plan submission, because so we want to make sure that everything, any items which come up during this um, review um, will be, you know, incorporated into the plan before the stamp. Um, number three, the culvert cover. Uh, the cover depth over the culverts um, has been reviewed and modified. Um, the 15-inch culvert at station um, 268 has a minimum of the one-foot cover over the pipe. The finished grade of the roadway over the 12-inch culvert at station um, 381 has been raised in order to obtain a minimum of one-foot cover over the pipe. Uh, for number four, box cuts. Um, Les Berry uh, submitted a letter. Um, his response was that uh, the existing um, road uh, was probably inspected by uh, Bob Malley, so there should be a record of the construction. And he suspects that the road's okay, but a few test pits may be necessary during construction to verify the gravel thickness and quality. Number five, the central main power easement. Um, as I mentioned in, our, in, the, in the presentation, um, that we're in the process of securing a utility easement for the underground um, service um, for electric cable and telephone. Number six, uh, the subsurface wastewater disposal systems. There was no response required for that one. Number seven, the maintenance responsibility of the water main and hydrant. Uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, the, after the system is installed, inspected, and approved, the Portland Water District will own and maintain the public uh, water line and hydrant. And um, we've submitted a draft of the easement, um, which you will probably get in the next round of meetings. Um, and we've attached a, the Portland Water District easement um, note um, to both sheets um, three and four, which is our road plan and profile. Number eight, the stormwater management calculations. Uh, the submission booklet containing the stormwater management calculations has been submitted to uh, AMIC for their review. Uh, number nine, uh, post flows. Um, Les Berry uh, submitted a response for this one. 
and um, the post flows are minimal and uh, the outlet end of each pipe um, doesn't really have much grade, it's sort of flat side in this area. And um, the level spreader should probably be more of a hindrance than a help in this particular situation. Number 10, ditch velocities. Uh, temporary stone check dams have been added to the road ditches in areas where the grades warrant erosion control. Um, and on sheet four and sheet six of our plans that we resubmitted, um, there's a detail for the stone check dam and sheet four has the locations. And I think that should address all of the comments from Anik. Okay, focusing on the question of completeness, which is the one before us at the moment. Anyone have any questions or items they'd like to discuss? I do. Eliza. Yeah. Um, so one of the items that we would need is the road maintenance agreement, mm -hmm. and that hasn't been finalized. And what's the risk that all the parties can't get together and agree? I mean, typically it's uh, an agreement that's proposed with the subdivision, and then anybody who buys a lot has to comply with it. But this is sort of an after-the-fact negotiation. Um, uh, what's your feeling about where that stands? Right. Um, as part of our the April 22nd submission, uh, we did submit um, a declaration of covenants um, with respect to the maintenance for Golden Ridge Lane extension. And um, this this document is mostly for lots three and four, um, although the intent is to you know do the all of Golden Ridge Lane and to update the entire agreement um, from the 1986 agreement. So, I mean, it's uh, this agreement could work with the existing 1986 agreement, although it would be much cleaner to have a, like a full new document. So, I mean, we we are working with the with the letters on that and have submitted a draft of what we. So the one you Post. submitted is sufficient to meet the completeness, completeness requirement, but, but in your view, it's not the ideal maintenance right. agreement? Yeah. Well, we're, we're still working on the agreement, yeah, okay. the consensus. <laughs> Anybody else? Madam Chairman, can I ask a question? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Um, are these lots that you're proposing, have they been sold already? Um, the... The, the two lots are owned, um, well, the, the one lot which we're proposing to subdivide into two is owned by Golden Ridge Lane, Lane LLC, who's the developer, and they have not been sold yet. So somebody that was going to buy them would be subject to this agreement? Correct. Okay. Anybody else? Would anyone like to make a motion regarding completeness? Motion for consideration. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Golden Ridge Lane LLC for amendments to the previously approved Golden Ridge subdivision to add another lot at the end of Golden Ridge Lane be deemed complete. Do I have a second? A second. Liza? All right. Any discussion on the motion for completeness? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, so that's six votes in favor. No opposed, no abstain abstention. So the next item to consider um, is whether we want to. Do we have to hold a public hearing or is this optional? In this case, it's an amendment. You, you don't have to hold a public hearing since it's an amendment, but okay. uh, as the planner, I will report to you that I have received uh, inquiries from abutters, so there's definitely interest out there, and you might have someone at the public hearing. Okay. So with that input, the question is, do we want to hold a public hearing, and if so, we would proceed with the motion to table. Madam Chairman, I'd yes. like to ask a question. One, I looked at the uh, level map. I didn't quite follow the ridge, uh, uh, the ridge along there, and I'd suggest perhaps we would benefit by a site visit. I agree. Anyone else? Liza? Okay. Everybody else think site visit's a good idea? Do you have a consensus on that? All right. Should we 
schedule that first. We're done with snow. We're done with water. Actually, the elevation I was looking for. I'd forgotten the elevation. Okay. Do you have a suggestion, Maureen? Well, because last week was school vacation week, you've got a very compressed schedule. Typically, the planning board tries to hold a site walk before the applicant is obligated to make a new submission. Um, technically, the submission for the May 17th meeting is this Friday. Um, obviously, we'd probably push that back to at least next Monday, um, in which case the question is, are you willing to do it on Saturday, April 30th, which might be too quick for most people, but that would at least give the applicant the benefit of your comments at the site walk before they're obligated to get a plan in. Otherwise, you, you, you've got to look at another weekend. Or Sunday? <laughs> Saturday work for most okay, people? For me, what are we talking about time-wise? Morning? Usually you hold Generally. us in the morning. They usually take about an hour. Is that a possibility? I mean, it, it's light enough no. at the end of the day. If, I don't know what people's work schedules are. Perhaps you could do it at the end of the work day. You could even try to squeeze it in 4 or 5 o'clock on a Friday. It's, it's your call. I mean, it doesn't matter. Thank you. I will adjust the uh, 5 o'clock on a Friday would be better for me than 9 o'clock on a Saturday. Both of them would be tough. But I could make more. Liza? I could do five on Friday. Yeah, or Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon? The Saturday afternoon work? Is that worse? It's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Friday at five o'clock? You. I can. I'm, I'm looking at Mr. Olfein. I'm not saying a word. Listen. <laughs> the options are difficult for me. I, I think five o'clock on Friday would be the most appealing. Liza? Yeah. yeah. Five o'clock on Friday. What about? Can you all have somebody there five o'clock on Friday? Uh, yes. As in. Two days from now? It's in April That's 29. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or Thursday? <laughs> Thursday. Is it tomorrow? tomorrow. Even? And so your next submission date would then be, you can extend that until? I, why don't I talk to the app and see what's realistic? And okay. Uh, what we're going to do is instead of make it Friday, try to make it as early next week as possible. Okay. And is, is this sufficient notice of the site walk to yes. meet the notice requirements? Yes. Okay. And you want to make an agreement on where you're going to meet on the site. Is there parking? Mm, no. Yeah. You yes. can park on the, on the side of, I mean, they can it park on the side of the Golden Ridge Lane. Right. Okay. okay so I, that's I have it on good authority. You can park there. Just don't stay too long. Right? Mm. <laughs> so this Friday, two days from now, 5 o'clock. And where are you meeting? Are you meeting at the end of the existing Golden Ridge Lane? Or do you want to meet at the beginning of where Golden Ridge Lane intersects Route 77? Since you can see. I would think we would want to walk the whole road. So why don't we meet at the beginning? OK, so having that established, the next question is whether we want to do, whether we want to go ahead and schedule a public hearing the next opportunity for that would be at our next regular meeting, May 17th. I'm getting a lot of nods. Okay, anyone want to make a motion then <coughs> to that effect? Victoria. 
Okay, motion to table then. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Golden Ridge Lane LLC for amendments to the previously approved Golden Ridge subdivision to add another lot at the end of Golden Ridge Lane be tabled to the regular May 17, 2011 planning board meeting, at which time a public hearing will be held. Do I have a second? Liza? Any further discussion? All in favor? All right, that's all six of us unanimous. No opposition, no abstentions. Thank you very much. You're we'll see you Friday. Okay. <laughs> and members of the public are, of course, invited to the site walk on Friday. The next item on the agenda is Rosewood Subdivision Amendment. Joe Frustacci is requesting amendments to the previously approved Rosewood Subdivision to create another lot at the end of Rosewood Drive under Section 1625 Subdivision Amendment. And is someone here to present the application? Please start by introducing yourself. Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Rick Light and I'm an engineer uh, with my new firm of Light Environmental Design and with me tonight is uh, Mr. Fristaggi, the applicant. And, uh, I'm sorry, with you is? Mr. Fristaggi. Ah, okay. Thank you. So if you'd like, I could give you a brief introduction, background, and a quick summary of the project. Please do. Like. Um, just a little bit of history. The, the Rosewood subdivision was approved back in 1992. It was a five-lot subdivision. It was later revised in, in 2001, and again revised in 2003, as stated in my cover letter. And the application before you is simply to take what is currently lot four of that project and divide that lot. That lot is 64,026 square feet and divide that lot into two, uh, two lots, which would conform with the RC district of a minimum of 20,000 square feet. So as such, we're before the board to request an amendment to the previously amended subdivision and also a private access waiver for reasons which I've explained and I'll, I'll go through, through here. Um, essentially, the, the, it's a pretty simple process. Um, the, the lot itself is on the end of Rosewood Lane, as you can see. I apologize. Wait, is there a pointer up here? Bring a pointer. I don't know. Know. In the red bag. Is there one I can be helpful for? Okay, so the current lot, this is the end of Rosewood Lane, which is about a 600 and some odd foot long private way, 50 foot right of way, 18 foot gravel way, which comes off of Woodlawn. And this is the current lot right here, which is about 64,000 square feet. What we're proposing is to create lot 4B and 4A, and this is the T turnaround, so that such that 4A has 140 feet of frontage. Lot B only has 50 feet of frontage at the very end of the road. And hence the request for a private access waiver uh, for the board to approve one lot on a private way with 50 feet of reduced frontage. The current frontage, as you're aware, is 100 feet in the RC district. The project, what we focused on here, the current lot is, re is actually Mr. Prestasha's residence. This, this lot is built, this home is built, the driveway is built, the shed, the garage is built. And it's a pretty large lot remaining at 43,000 square feet, even after the division is proposed. What we've proposed here is, to, is a new building lot with a, a conceptual building shown on the plan that would have a building in here meeting applicable setbacks 
and a driveway into the building. And also, I'll talk about in a minute, is a driveway curling around and actually utilizing the T turnaround uh, for part of the driveway. And I'll talk about that in a second. And behind the lot, the lot is partially wooded now. The lot would drain towards the rear of the lot. And we're proposing, because of the steep the slopes there, is to put a stone wall in behind the lot, create a swale, and get the, divert the drainage along from 4A into 4B. And the water currently goes through an X or drainage easement, excuse me, it's on the town, there's a town property right here, which then drains down to Mitchell Road. And, um, and that provides a little bit of rear, rear lawn to the lot as well. And it also diverts the drainage, which currently everything sheet flows this, in this direction now. It would take the drainage and actually divert it away from the abutters and put it into this drainage. It's actually, I don't know if it's a formal easement, but it's a strip of land which is part of the town's parcel, which is an open space parcel which encompasses this lot. In one of the previous applications, you may recall, um, Mr. Fristacci had given uh, five, I think 5.3 acres of conservation land which completely surrounds this lot. And that finger here is a part of that conservation land, I believe, which goes down to Mitchell Road where there's a culvert. The septic system of the lot is serviced by public water up to a point about right here with an eight inch main and the service to the existing house is a one inch service. And at the time when that was done, there was ledge found in here, and so they, they stopped the water line right in here somewhere. And we're proposing to service this lot with another single service from the existing water main. The site would be serviced, of course, by septic system, and there's been a septic system designed and approved by the code enforcement officer, Mr. Smith, by Albert Frick Associates in that location right there. The project would be subject to a road maintenance agreement, which currently exists for the Rosewood Drive, and it has been amended. Um, and in terms of meeting open space requirements, the applicant has uh, provided in our previous sketch plan that he would contribute to the fee in lieu of to meet the open space requirements. But as a reminder, there also is this area that's surrounded by that 5.3 acre open space parcel, which in your application, I wish I had a... a PowerPoint slide. There's, an, there's a, uh, a visual in the application which shows the aerial. This is completely surrounded by open space, which is very nice. Um, and also to meet the uh, affordable housing provision under zoning 17 9, uh, 1974, excuse me, um, they have, Mr. Fristacci has designated, uh, will designate lot three of the Blueberry Ridge subdivision, which is a subdivision just uh, off the edge of the property and that lot has already been designated through that subdivision process an affordable lot and he's proposing that lot three in that subdivision meet the affordable uh, requirements the affordable housing re provision requirements so again we're in front of us the, the two things we're looking for is an amendment to the previous subdivision and again a, a, the uh, a, a approval of a private access waiver for the reduced frontage on lot 4b I think that sums up the presentation. Anyone have any questions before we open the public comment period? Yes. I just want to make sure I understand um, the driveway going across what is currently set up as the deadhead turnaround for fire apparatus, correct? Mm -hmm. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, and thank you. I, I was going to come back to it, and I did, so thank you for bringing that up. And. Uh, and it shows that coming in as a circular driveway and then the center of that drive is the center of that is on both the lot and both on the pub, on the public right of way so who's responsible for maintaining the section of the driveway that goes through the deadhead and who's responsible that isn't actually on the homeowner's property that would be that's a very good question because it's a, i'm glad you brought me back to this the t turnaround right here, the 50 by 40 turnaround. Um, what we propose is the driveway, which doesn't show up well, and I apologize about the print, it doesn't come up that well. There's a circular driveway. The turnaround part is 24 feet wide as per the town standard. And that turnaround would be incorporated into the driveway. That would be maintained by the homeowners association through the homeowners agreement. The part where the driveway connects into the lot would be the applicants. And I do want to make, a, I guess, an adjustment to our application. I, I had referenced in the application that that would be paved. And when we come back for final, uh, we remove the, the, the proposal on, 
we would like to amend that to keep that gravel. The rest of the road is gravel. The T ought to be gravel, and uh, we had suggested it be paved, but I think gravel would be more appropriate. I think Mr. Prescott would agree to that. Um, but, but geometrically, uh, that's where the T part of the hammerhead, as you call it, would be. And then the island would be um, maintained by both the association and the homeowner since it's shared? By so, both. Technically, I think, in all honesty, the homeowner would maintain that island and mow it, but if it came push claim to shove, the portion of it that was within the right of way would be the association. You're correct. My name is Joe Fisnaggi. I'm the applicant. This, I'm trying to talk my wife into downsizing, and this would be my home. At which point, um, I would certainly maintain it. If this isn't my home, then I would put something in the deed, some language to uh, re require the owner of this new lot to maintain the circle and the, uh, the plowing and maintain that paved area. The reason we have that, cir uh, that circle is I just thought it'd be a lot more convenient just to back out and then drive out into the into the road. And that's why it was designed like that. But it's only going to add to the aesthetic beauty of the property by maintaining that, that circle that, that I Do, Does the, um, the way the driveway is being proposed, does that uh, allow for emergency vehicle turnaround through the driveway? To uh, the question. To, to, to the uh, hammerhead, yes. Yeah. So. Yes, it does. Okay. There's nothing there now. This is would yeah. be an improvement, uh, <laughs> and we are. I'm trying to get a hold of the fire chief for him to approve what we're doing. I talked to Bob Malley when before we designed this, and basically his comment was, "We're not maintaining it. We're not plowing it. As long as it meets the fire chief's requirements, you know, I'm satisfied." I've been plowing that road for 20 years now. Um, I don't expect that I'll be doing it for another 20. But that, that is part of the maintenance agreement. When we originally wrote the um, uh, road maintenance agreement in 1991, it was written with the understanding that another lot would be added. Um, it's now time to add the, add the lot, and we've uh, addressed the um, uh, addition of that lot to the road maintenance agreement. And this, this again, would be maintained by the um, by whoever plows and the and the association. You have more comments before we do the public comment? Um, yeah, I do have a question about. Um, okay. I, I, we did get a letter about draining. So when I was looking at the plans, I see something about a proposed boulder wall. Not being an engineer or anything along those lines. What, what, do, what does that do? Are you holding back the, the soil, or does it have something to do with the drain? And can, if you could just explain that a little it's bit. It's a little of both. The boulder wall is, again, along the back of the lot here, ends up right up in here. The idea of the boulder wall, these my arms described, is you've got a slope that comes down. It's all closer to the woods, and they want to pick that slope up. So the wall, it is a retaining type of a wall. We're proposing to use it with something we do pretty typically on projects, which is a dry laid boulder boulder wall with a slight you know, one to six uh, kilter to it. And that wall, I think, varies from about you know, one foot at the lowest section to about six feet or so at the higher section. And, and then at the top of that wall, the, the water currently sheets down across the back of the lot. That wall, we have a swale proposed. So it collects any runoff that's going there currently and diverts it, uh, diverts it around the lots here over to the, the the drainage which goes to the culvert in the Mitchell Road. Look, looking at this map, um, which is lot three, it would appear that somehow or other you're running the water off onto lot three. Um, you, lot three, which is, if you're looking at that map, where you've got your point of that. Mm -hmm. And yet you said it was running down, so the retaining wall at the bottom, where you've got the point of that, is going to deflect more up onto lot three which is the normal runoff. Yet I see there's two ponds here. Where were they fed from? In other words, is this a, this is a hill? This is, to, to this is on the side of a hill. Topographically, there's a high point probably in here. There's a home on lot three, and there's a sort of a belly, a belly in here. What we're proposing to do, and there's a low spot between the two lots right here. We're proposing to pick the grades up and through here, 
sort of for the back of the back of the house, propose that retaining wall here, such that water that's going here will continue to go this way. Water that is here will continue to go to the back of the lot and be picked up by the swale here and be diverted this way. So to the extent that there might be a smidge of land here where some of the water comes onto the lot, it may get picked up by that swale rather than going directly into the abutters. But for the most part, it's, it's, it's the lot itself. If, I, if I'm correct, then the left-hand part of that map is lower than the right-hand part of that the map? The left-hand, you are correct. The left-hand is there lower. Is lower there than we are on the right. Correct. So the water that hits that retaining wall is going to flow on that map to the left. Correct. Correct. Away from lot three. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I'm continuing along with that. Okay. Sorry. I didn't is, that, is that your question clearly enough? Does that, Henry? Sorry. Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Victoria, go ahead. I'm, then on the right-hand side, um, so uh, will the right-hand side that's buffering lot three also be picked up uh, within that 20-foot buffer? This area over here? Will you be doing any work around the 20-foot buffer on <coughs> lot 4A that is against the edge of lot 3? Will that be lifted up too? Because it's, it's quite, it looks like there's a lot of vegetation, a lot of trees. Will there be do on the, the buffer between lot 4A and lot 3? The buffer between lot 4A on this map is right here. On this map, to be clear, it's right there. here. Mm -hmm. Yes, what we have is, again, is that there's some ledge sort of a high point of, you know, somewhere up in here. Yeah. And we're, we're proposing, uh, there's going to be some cutting in here. We're proposing some adding some additional trees in here. But there's still a pretty good buffer. There's a pr pretty good wooded buffer between the two lots if we were to take a look at it. And I think I provided some photographs in the back of the application to suggest what that looks like. On, on the map to help give it a sense of character with that. that so like there there. will be some work within that 20-foot buffer, but you are proposing to add more trees yes. at that spot. Because I saw the uh, additional trees being added up in the, um, the T hammerhead area, but I didn't see that on the, these plants. Okay, and, and it's, it, now, we haven't gotten to the comment section with the staff, and maybe I'll jump in here. What we had proposed because of the trees were in the right-of-way, there was a comment that if they're there, then it becomes part of the association. In our revisions, we would probably propose to move these onto the lot so that they're just they're out of the T. It was just for aesthetic purposes. We wanted some trees up in here, but uh, due to the engineer's comments in our proposed revisions back to the board, we would suggest we put the trees back in here. Okay, and the trees, I saw the pictures, and the, the pictures look like there's some evergreens right now. Is the buffer between lot 4A and lot 3? So I would wonder if you could get evergreens back in there. There's Which is a, a nicer foot, buffer. No cut buffer on lot number three. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Is, is there some place I can speak into it? Can you hear me yes. now? Yeah. There's a you can black hear me? microphone right in front of you. That's this fellow right here? On the computer. Okay. Yep. There's a 20 foot no cut buffer on lot number three. Mm -hmm. The trees that initially were there were misplaced. I had told Rick we want to do some infill planting of evergreens. Obviously, they'd have to be in my property since I can't do anything on lot three. But we would fill them in probably about halfway from Rosewood Drive onto the lot and then beyond. Um, there are some, some um, evergreens there now, but we will, we will do some infill just to have a living buffer there. But there is a 20 foot no cut buffer on lot three existing and um, it's, it's pretty substantial. Okay. And will that buffer no cut also apply to lot 4A? No. 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 I mean, this, the house, you would have approximately 30 feet from the um, property line to the house, and you need a minimum of 20 feet to build the house and prevent uh, pine trees from growing up and then causing mold and other problems with the house. So we're proposing to leave that. If we do plant some trees, they would be on, on the back side of the lot, not where the house is. And that's why I say about halfway back, there will be some in, infill uh, plantings, but not right where the house is located okay. on the lot. As far as that buffer no cut, didn't the previous plans that were submitted say something about this subdivision would have a buffer and we would follow any previous plans? Well, the, the, the current approval does have a 20-foot no cut buffer. But at any point, an applicant can come in and ask for an amendment to the subdivision plan. Okay. So their, their, their plan could, 
you know, you could create a new lot and not propose the, the no cut, and it would be uh, a new approval that would layer on top of the old approval. Okay, so they're proposing the no cut. Thank you. So they're proposing they're not, they're to eliminate the no cut, the no cut zone that currently exists at the edge of what is now the boundary between or, the undivided lot four that's what, and or, lot three. Or any other activity, because um, I believe your septic is in the part of your septic is in the 20-foot buffer. Well, it's 20-foot from the property line. Um, and quite honestly, I can't remember a 20-foot no cut on lot number four. I know we had it on other lots, but I don't remember it being on, on lot number four. I will go back to my records and check. I, I know that on three of the lots we had no cut, and on the on um, I, I know we planted additional trees on lot number three when we developed it, but I can't remember a no cut buffer. And we will look through our plans. Okay. Maureen I is can't doing it remember now. either. Maureen is doing it now. Um, you also had another question about uh, what we're doing on lot three to assist in the drainage. Uh, yes, on lot, what you're doing on lot four. Okay. This is with drainage with lot we're, three. Okay. We're starting, this is lot three, and again, you can see there is about a 20-foot um, portion of lot three that is beyond my lot. We're going right into lot three with these, um, um, I'm going right into lot three with the, with the stone boulders, and we're going to try to catch what water that I legally can do that's coming down from lot three onto lot 4A. So we're, we're trying to collect as much water as we can. Uh, this portion, I really don't have a control on, so I can't, I can't collect it. But we're doing the best we can to collect as much water and divert it down into this um, stream that's already there. It's been existing forever and a day. And as Rick indicated, this was land that I I gave to the town when we um, did these other subdivisions. So we're going to try to collect as much water as we can and slope it down um, away from the lots on, on, Mitchell, on Mitchell Road. And I know you've got some communications and there's a gentleman here this evening that I'm sure you're going to hear from shortly and he's going to say a few things. But um, we talked with uh, Mr. Stamp and some a couple of years ago to try to work out a plan and we're still open to discuss what we had proposed at that time and you know, we want to make sure that he's comfortable. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Got Patiently waiting. <laughs> okay. So um, I went and looked, walked down the road and um, I, I saw a lot of standing water. I saw some large, one very large uh, windblown tree in a wet area on the proposed lot 4A. Um, and so I, anecdotally, it just looked like there were drainage issues along all of Rosewood Drive. And then I see here that you're asking for a waiver on a stormwater management plan. And I just wanted to know a little bit about that because personally I would like when we evaluate the application to have a stormwater management plan that um, the town engineer then reviews. And could you talk about why you requested a waiver on that? Be, be glad to. Um, the reason typically a stormwater management plan would be done for an entire project, when we're doing a single lot uh -huh. to, try to, to try to do an analysis using a TR-20, TR-55, it's not applicable to a single small lot. So in a case like this, uh, what we proposed is the amount of disturbance, the amount of work we're doing is minimal relative to the entire watershed, very minimal. It's, it's a single lot. Yeah. But the approach then is to look at erosion control and focus on best management practices. So what we did would say, look, water now is coming across the lot this way. Let's divert. And there's already a drainage here, which goes to a culvert in uh, Mitchell Road. So I that in your face. And then to a wetland beyond. Let's divert the water. And, and Mr. Vistacci wanted to build at the back of the lot anyway. Let's swale the water along the back of the lot on his property, put that into the existing drainage as it should go. And, and that, in effect, is a stormwater management plan, absent calculations. Now, the reality is, if you take the lot and take what's draining there today and take what's going to be the proposed improvements, that the, the increase is probably negligible in terms of the overall watershed in terms of impervious area and that sort of thing. 
So that means, so from a microcosm, the, the micro view, there are things going on to deal with stormwater. The macro view, it's not as if we want to run, that felt that it was necessary to run an entire watershed study to look at one lot. And the town engineer uh, agreed with us in, 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 uh, in his comments as well. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, we'll now open the public comment period. If there's anyone from the public who would like to speak, please come forward. Give us your name and your address. Good evening. My name is Catherine Germani. I live at 160 Mitchell Road, um, and I am the direct abutter to most of this project. I purchased my house in 2010. When I purchased my house, the, previ the um, executor for the previous owner told me that prior to that subdivision being built, there were not the significant water issues that there currently are. I realized that there's ledge up there. We have significant water issues in that area. So I am most concerned, even with a boulder retaining wall, that it will not mitigate the storm runoff and certainly will not mitigate having a leach field essentially in my backyard because the project does ask for a septic system to be put in along with the leach field that is close to the property line, although it meets the setbacks. In listening to this presentation, I now also have concerns about the way the water will run off the other side of the boulder wall. I appreciate the fact that you came up and looked. It is a very wet area. And from the property lines down, we sit at a disadvantage. My house does not sit as, as much at a disadvantage as my two abutting neighbors to the other side, who frequently have water in their backyards after a rainstorm. We all have sump pumps in that area. Unfortunately, we frequently have power outages in that area as well. So if you live in an area with a sump pump, and the power goes out, you really have essentially swimming pools in your, in your basements. Um, so I have serious concerns about this. Um, I certainly have seen the houses up on Rosewood. I know Mr. Fristacci does a fabulous job. I have somebody who works for me who lives in Blueberry Ridge. They're beautiful houses over there. But I have concerns about allowing an amendment to this subdivision given the current water problems up there in Rosewood and where the water flows. I have, I believe you received a letter from my husband. He has talked to the state plumbing inspector. We have some concerns that they're not required to tie into a sewer line. I understand there is ledge up there. Um, I do understand there is a water line that they're hoping to tie into. Most municipalities require people to tie into water and sewer if it's close enough. There are sewer lines on Woodland, sewer lines on Mitchell Road, and sewer lines in Blueberry Ridge. I think your ordinance says 200 yards to the nearest sewer line. I could be wrong about that. The document's pretty deep, and trying to page through it is difficult when you don't have a lot of time. Um, so I do have concerns. I hope that the planning board comes over and looks at the site. Um, I would appreciate your time to do that. I know we're backed up a little bit, but I think unless you get a visual on the site, you really don't have a clear understanding of building a house and a septic and a leach field close to the abutter's property and the issues that it may cause with the water. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Douglas Sargent. I live at 156 Mitchell. It makes me an indirect abutter. Abut uh, actually, uh, the first, uh, Germani's land is directly behind you. Excuse Douglas. me, what was your name, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Douglas Sargent. Sorry, thank you, Raymond. And I was present at a meeting a year ago when, regarding this. I sent a letter uh, voicing my concerns about the runoff. And Joe and his engineer worked with me to come up with what he has now. I don't consider it the best of all possible solutions, but I consider it a workable solution. And from my point of view, uh, 
what he has here satisfies my concerns if it's implemented substantially the way it's shown now. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Excuse me, are you the owner of lot three? I'm trying to find you on the map. No, no. I'm, I would be on Mitchell Road. Mitchell Road. Do you know which one of these that would be? This is the one just here. U3490. U3490. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Any other members of the public wish to speak? I'm Marilyn Sargent, 156 Mitchell Road, and I have to say I didn't expect to be up here, but um, I really would like somebody else, if there was somebody else independent who could come, and um, I would say I agree with my husband. If this would work, it would be very nice, but I also agree with Mrs. Germani. I just am concerned. We have Lake Sargent in our backyard most of the time, and so... Um, I would just like there to be an independent person, if possible, to say, oh, yeah, this really is going to work, and it's going to not put more water. It's going to take away water. Um, and you can come see our lake at any time. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? OK, the public comment period is closed. The question before the planning board is one of completeness. Any discussion? Actually, I have a question. May I? May I? Sure. sure. Go right ahead. Um, could you tell me the existing house on Lot Four? What is the sewerage arrangements for that one? Is it mains or is it on a on an existing? Or what is its current status? All four of these um, lots on Rosewood Drive have septic systems. They all have septic systems. They have septic systems. When we installed the, uh, or when we built the road in 1991, there was no sewer on Woodland Road. So we had no choice but to do septic systems. Um, and to my knowledge, there's still no sewers in front of Rosewood Drive. We do have, we do have water, public water, which, which I installed in 91. And that's an eight-inch line. Thank you. Anyone else on completeness? All right. Anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Liza? Um, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Joseph Frustashi uh, for an amendment to the previously approved subdivision to create an additional lot located at the end of Rosewood Lane be deemed complete. Do I have a second? Victoria? Any further discussion on the issue of completeness? There are some items listed here. There are possible incomplete items. Do we have information that addresses each of them, like uh, a drainage easement for the, for the area that's uh, across the, uh, 4A, from 4B to 4A? Do we have that easement or a draft of that a proposal? Through the chair, I'd be happy to answer the sure. question. Any other completeness items, if there are other ones? Um, to answer that question, yes, we have received the staff comments and uh, Maureen's memo to the board and the engineer's comments. And I actually have the package here, which uh, we'll be submitting, but I have the package here which addresses all that. And yes, the, we are proposed, we are we're in agreement to provide a 15-foot drainage easement along the back of this lot, which is a, is a very a point well made by the engineer, so that the drainage from here goes onto this lot. There will be a 15-foot easement uh, added to the plan. Yes. What about the financial and technical capability? Uh, there are, and the financial and technical capability, uh, Mr. Fustacci is, uh, you're going to post a, you're going to talk to the town manager. He, he doesn't want to put his personal bank records in public 
on, on the public, but he will sure. provide information. He's a stand you know, he's a long standing, you know, citizen of the town. He's been developing for forty years and he is, will provide information that I'm sure will satisfy the need. In terms of technical ability, we have a response here. Uh, we have both have a technical team, the surveyor Dan Delfonso, who's a licensed surveyor, uh, an engineering and licensed uh, site evaluator and licensed engineer, and Mr. Pistacci, who has built the project to begin with, would be building the would be building and, and GCing the the improvements that you're looking at here. So I think from a technical standpoint, there's certainly a, a wealth of technical um, background to, to to support that. Um, if I might just go on, if just rather than ask the questions, I could get to them immediately. There were several other uh, completeness items that Maureen had pointed out. One was a locust map, and we are proposing that the locust map be added to the final plat. It was left off the plat. We're totally in agreement with that. Uh, item 8C, water service. We, uh, at the time of the application, we had not received our water serviceability letter. We have, we have just received that. I think it was today, and I forwarded a copy to Maureen, so we do have a copy of the water serviceability letter. And uh, again, item 10C was the easement. So I think from a completeness standpoint, unless there's something else I'm not aware of, I, I believe that might address it. Unless there are any other items that I'm not aware of. But I think those were the only ones on completeness. There were some other items under the discussion session mm -hmm. section. We can get to those now or, or after we do this. All right, so we'll do the completeness first then. Any more discussion on that? So we have a motion that's been seconded. All in favor? That's all six of us in favor, so that's unanimous. Right. Okay, the next issue then, that now that completeness is here, we can discuss any of these other questions. We need to decide whether we do want a site walk on this property too and a public walk. I'm sorry, I would suggest that we uh, do a site walk. I think it's necessary. Everybody agree on that? Yes. So I think we have the same schedule. Constraints. I don't think we can do one at five o'clock on Friday and another at six. I think we're going to get <laughs> They're not close enough together for that. So there's the possibility either of Saturday um, or we would have to give a further extension, I think, of the submissions. Well, you could ask the applicant to resubmit, but if you if you had your site walk, say, the following weekend, um, it does become a little problematic if you find some things you want the applicant to respond to. They might have to look at going through the public hearing on May 17th and then another tabling in order to give them time to do that. Quite frankly, if you have a public hearing on May 17th, they might have to be tabled anyway. There's no guarantees in any of this. Okay. And I guess the other timing question was the issue Liza raised about the waiver with respect to the stormwater drainage information, um, which may affect timing anyway. But we may have a better idea of that after we do our sidewalk than we do before. Uh, to be fair, um, if you do want to go over the, the town engineer's comment, uh, the problem with the calculations is not that it's a hugely expensive thing for the applicant. It's just it really won't provide you with any better information. Um, the kind of stormwater modeling that gets done does not very well reflect an alteration that is this small. So you could run the calculations now, and then you could add in the impervious surface that comes from this project, and the numbers are going to be virtually identical. So the modeling that's currently available just won't help you with that kind of situation. You have to really work with more of field conditions and, and topography um, rather than the calculations. So let me ask you a question on that. There's something I'm, I'm not quite clear on. Um, I gather that this kind of stormwater calculation was not initially done for the subdivision. Is that right? No, I, I believe the stormwater calculations were done for the subdivisions. Um, drainage, uh, I can go through the file and find them, but drainage was a very significant issue the first time this came through. It's a very ledgy area. There's not a lot of opportunity for the ground to absorb water, and it, it flows places. But if, if we were to determine, it's just a question, if we were determined, this, as I understand it, this proposed amendment opens the subdivision back up. 
So if we were to determine that the drainage in this subdivision is inadequate, mm -hmm. regardless of whether there is a new house constructed, we could determine not to permit a new house because already the drainage is inadequate. Is that correct or not correct? I think you could make that finding. However, you would want to have sufficient technical information that backs up that finding. And the problem, well, the, the, the status at this point is that the uh, town's engineer who did an independent review is saying that he doesn't think that the design that's being proposed is inappropriate. And that's me paraphrasing his two-page letter. But he's focusing on the additional drainage caused by the new house not looking comprehensively at the, sub at the subdivision to determine whether the existing drainage plan is inadequate. To me, those are two separate issues. And I, I think if I understand him right, that he's only saying, that he could be saying, the drainage out there is problematic, but this is only going to make it a tiny bit more problematic, and this wall will deal with the tiny bit more problematic. However, if you were to reach into the past and say right. that the original proposal was flawed, mm -hmm. you would still need, I would still strongly recommend that you have a technical basis for making that finding. And that would require information that is not currently in the record? Yes. You might want to go to your town engineer and ask them to expand their review. It's an interesting approach. I don't think the board has ever done it, but I, I think you really do need to bulk up what you have for stormwater background information if you want to take that road. Madam, Madam Chair, if it's appropriate, um, yes. and, and I can't speak specifically to the 1991 the 1992 original stormwater calculations. I haven't seen that. I can't speak to them. But procedurally, in sort of from the, the sort of a thousand foot view, what was likely done when it was using T, what we call TR20, TR55, whatever methodology was done at the time for the hydraulic hydrologic analysis, is they would take that subdivision, they would make assumptions about the amount of impervious area, the amount of disturbed area that is being changed from what was the previous land cover type, that we call it, you know, woods, grass, whatever, and, and then fill those calculations, fill those impervious areas and those changes in the, in the land use into, the, into a, a program which came up with, with an assessment of drainage in all the various watersheds. Not saying that all the water went in one direction, it was probably a split of watersheds. And my point being is that when we do these sorts of analyses, we don't typically take each lot and put on the exact building and the exact footprint. We have no idea. We take a reasonable assumption on a reasonable amount of lot that might be developed. And some lots are going to be developed more so than you might have assumed, and some are going to be less so. So there's a factor of safety, and there's a factor, a factor of, of, of cushion in there for the amount of development that you assume. So I can't speak specifically, I don't intend to, but just in terms of procedurally, when we do a project, if you had a 100 lot subdivision, and someone were to say, and generally the watershed is, is 500 acres, and you're a portion of that 500 acre watershed, and someone added one lot, well, we're looking at the whole, this approach looks at how do we deal with our direct abutters in the best way we can. That approach deals with that 500 acre watershed does one extra house make a, any difference? Absolutely not. You can't even, it's so infinitesimal relative to the watershed. So a watershed here might be many, many, many acres in terms of looking at a watershed. And that's the way the analysis would have been done for the original subdivision in terms of its overall watersheds. And we know across the street we've got ponds and that sort of thing. And, and I don't, again, I don't know exactly how, but that's, that's the mechanics of it to give you a sense of it was probably done on a much larger scale so that adding a little bit of impervious here and there probably, as Maureen said, probably wouldn't have a significant effect on the overall change in numbers. But when we look at one lot, we can do certain things by doing best management practices like we've done, looking at grading and looking at the drainage topography on a lot specifically and dealing with those things, sort of feet on the ground sort of approach. As I, as I read it, I believe this development is, has a few years of history already. Mm -hmm. And theoretically is one thing, but there must be historical information on actually what's happened rather than what was theoretically judged. And listening to comment about runoff, 
present time and, and wet ground. It may be that calculation or the theory didn't quite match the practice. I don't know. But um, is that history, of, is, the, is there any information in the last few years available as to what the actual situation is rather than the new calculation about what would happen if you built something like that? If you do a site walk, you can see that there is, this is higher than what's on Mitchell Road, the houses on Mitchell Road. Those houses on Mitchell Road are low, the water runs to the low point, and there's water there. We're trying to correct some of that runoff. What's happened in the last 20 years happened before that, because the water was running downhill at that particular time. So the water that's, that's continuing to run down there, I can't say it's more and I can't say it's less. But if I build this house, it will be less, simply by the way we're diverting the water to the natural stream. As far as the history, I knew Norman Namey. He was a friend of mine. I was in his house a number of times. He was in my house a number of times. He had this house built, and I can't remember what year it was. All right. But, What's that? 1980. Okay. He never told me that my subdivision added more water to his, to his house. I, I know George Namey, the executive who sold the house. He's a friend of mine. He never cursed me. I can't sell that house because of the water in the basement. And I've, and I've, been, in, I've been in Norman's house a number of times. I can't say that water running into Norman's house in 1980 was a cause of my subdivision. I'm going to say it is. I'm going to say it was. But nothing was done to correct it. I'm making a proposal now to correct some of that water that's running to his house. And I'm doing that to Mr. Sargent's house also. Thank you, Vera. So, I, mean, I think that if you do hire an independent person, and, I, and Steve from Harding has been, been on that site since he started work for Oast and, and before, um, and he will agree that if we, anything is going to be an improvement, uh, we're going to control a lot of that water. We walked it and saw water pooling up. We had, you know, there's no place for that water to go. It's trapped. Blueberry Ridge, when we developed Blueberry Ridge, we were, we were told that the water is flooding our basements and all. When we went in and did that subdivision, we gave the water a place to go, and it dried it up. We have catch basins between the South Portland Houses, Gowdy Street, and Blueberry Ridge that are dry as a bone. We, will, we put them in as a safety precaution, but they're not draining water because we gave the water that was pooling up a place to go. That's what we're proposing on this, on this lot now, to give a reason for the water to go somewhere else or, and assist it to go somewhere else to prevent water in their basements. It's not going to be a it's not going to be a hundred percent cure because I mentioned water is still coming from this, but we're going to do a dandis to take collect as much water as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? So maybe we should go back to scheduling our site walk after which we may have a better basis for deciding how to go on that. So I guess our options are either Saturday or Sunday if we do that. Do we ever do them on Sunday? Once. Once, okay. So <laughs> Saturday or perhaps an evening the follow early the Monday following week. Monday Monday evening at five o'clock. Yeah. Will that work for people? It's May second. Monday, May second at five o'clock? That's the second? Okay. So we have... We're going to be meeting at the end of Rosewood... Excuse me, yeah, Rosewood Lane. Is that adequate? I'd have to ask you. I don't know. So it's near the dead end. Near the, right near the dead end. How do we get through to um, this? I understand, but how do you... 
Just park you just walk, walk, walk across this. Okay, okay. Yeah. fair enough. Right. Okay. So meet at the end of Rosewood Lane? Five o'clock on Monday. Okay. Madam Chairman, could I ask a yes. question of the engineer? Mm -hmm. Sure. Is there an alternative that is superior to the one that you're suggesting? In terms of drainage and grading? I, I, can't, th I can't say that there would be. If you, you have two things are going on. You've got, I mean, essentially, you've got water that's going, wants to go. As we all know, water will seek its own. You've got a high point here. Essentially, water is going this way, down mm -hmm. you know, from high to low. You've got most spots up here which are reflected, and this is sort of flat up in here. You know, this is, obviously, you've got wetlands up in here. And I, for the life of me, can't think, I mean, without studying this thing to death, it, it, what we're doing makes a lot of sense. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, have an, I have a suggestion and, a, and a, a proposal. I've said a couple of times that I can't collect the water that's coming off my lot three onto this lot. If we have permission, we might move that, those boulders or try to collect some of that water that's coming down here and channel it along the back side of my property and the back side of Danini's. Danini, is, it, is that Danini? Giamatti. 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 Fellow Italian, I can't. Yeah. We, can, we can try to collect some of that water and channel it over to this corner here and off to this area. But if you look at it, you will see that this, this ledge here, and it's high, and this portion is also, well, it's a little lower. So the water is naturally going to their foundation or their property. But something can, their house is located up in here, and this is woods. Mm -hmm. Something can be done to collect the water and channel it over here. And we're willing to do that as a, as a solution. And it might help the sergeants of the additional water coming onto their property that we can't legally collect. So we might work with them with that, and that, uh, that one. Suggestion. Mm -hmm. No, no, it makes sense. Something to explore. Mm -hmm. OK, anybody else? I have one question on the affordable housing lots. Is it? acceptable to do that lot in another subdivision? The, the ordinance does make that provision. Okay. And it is an immediately abutting subdivision. Um, of course, certain notes and other things will have to be reported to formalize that. Right. It can't just be part of this group. I'm sure the applicant will work, work that out. And if I understand it right, it is on land that was initially part of this subdivision. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other question that's still somewhat up in the air is the uh, exchange of, of emails regarding the private road, private access way, um, and where we are on that. Is, is this road both a private road and a private access way? Is there a boundary between the two, or is the whole thing a little bit of both? The entire Rosewood Lane was approved as a private road. Right. And it still is a private road. Um, this was approved in the early 90s. In 1997, there was a complete <coughs> overhaul of the zoning ordinance, and the private access way standards changed um, so that now a private access way can only provide access to one lot. So there's no way that Rosewood Drive can be a private access way. It is absolutely a private road. Uh, the challenge is that uh, this is a traditional subdivision, not a clustered subdivision. And the minimum amount of road frontage that one needs for a new lot is 100 feet. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the amount of frontage you need, and your lot existed prior to 1997, as does this lot, you can create one additional lot that does not have adequate frontage as long as you have a private access way permit. For this, it's a little awkward, but you could go through the requirement of making the applicant come up with a 30-foot wide right-of-way and a road maintenance agreement for a very short section of the existing driveway that is located on lot four. It's really, it's very contrived. 
So the only section where you would actually have a private access way is a, the front portion of the driveway for the existing lot four. For the Otherwise, what we have is a private access way permit over a private road. It's not over the road. It would only be a private access way permit for that lot. Right. For that lot. To make it a buildable lot. Off the private road. Right. And it's, it, you don't need the private access way over Rosewood Lane because So in this case, the, the, the term private access way is not a physical piece of land, but the term private access way really means a private access way easement. It really means that you've checked the road, you've checked the lot, and you're forgiving the fact that it doesn't have 100 feet of frontage on a public or private road. And we're permitted to do that because it's a pre-existing lot. Yes. Okay. If it was a lot that was created after that time, you you you, and it already had a private access way or some other lot created, then they couldn't do it again. They'd have to find a way to extend a private road to it. But because this lot pre-existed 1997, it's eligible for one private access way permit. So lot four, the original lot, which is now becoming two lots, can get one? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, I mean, we can make them do a road maintenance agreement for that little stubby section of their driveway and lay out a 30-foot right-of-way, or, or we can say that we understand the situation and leave it the way it is. Okay. Anybody else have any questions on that? So I think we're open to a motion. I assume we, we do want a public hearing. Is that the consensus? So we're open to a motion to table then. Liza. Sure. Okay. Motion to table. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Joseph Frustasi, sorry, for an amendment to the previously approved Rosewood subdivision to create an additional lot located at the end of Rosewood Lane be tabled to the regular May 17, 2011 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Victoria? Any further discussion? All in favor? That's six of us, so we're unanimous on that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll see you Monday night. Very good. So I think with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion we adjourn. Carol, <laughs> second, Henry. All in favor? All right, we're unanimous. Thank you. We're done.